it in, baby. It's time to wake up. What? No, I want to sleep a bit. No, come on. It's getting late and they're already here. Some of these guys been waiting out there since 8 a.m. Don't these guys ever work? Here, I made you a cup of coffee. Sandy. Okay, you got like a half hour or so to get ready. So clean up your cube, okay? I'm just doing the morning today, right? In a hotel room for the weekend? We don't have enough yet for a hotel room. And even if we did, we'd go broke just like that. Let's work through today, see how it goes on Saturday. On Saturday, we should be able to triple our clients. And I want to make sure we roll through all the film we have. You said we were going to go to the hotel. I don't want to sleep in the same place we shoot. We could get caught. It gets cold at night. It's not right to make me stay in here. Listen, I'm not making you do anything. It's just I don't have any other place for us. You know I don't like mauling for strangers. It's just tricking anyway. I don't like it. Listen, I don't have any other work either. Here we don't pay rent. It's all word of mouth, fly by night, and we're gone. No different than making movies. Just doing stills. Let's see how it goes. And maybe Monday or Tuesday, we can get a hotel room, collect our thoughts, and figure something out. Hey, I got your wake up shot. Mm, good. Can I just sniff some? Nah, that would be a waste. You gotta shoot it now. Just a little. Enough to get you straight so you can work. Can't sniff it, though. It won't be strong enough, and you'll be dead in like an hour. Look, when we move into the hotel, you can kick it for a week. But for right now, you gotta stay well and work. Okay. Fix me up? Sure, baby. Drink your coffee. You know what I said about the shaky hands and the focusing? A wide and a medium shot, and still an arm's length away. And help them load the film. Always help them load the film. Okay, baby, I know how the show goes.
morning. Yeah, it is. Just a photo session today? Yeah. I, I've never shot analog. I'm sorry. It's okay. Let me load your phone. This place is awesome. Not like that. Thanks. Uh -huh. Do you know what poses you want me to do? No. Okay. I'll do the poses, and you shoot one full body and one close of each. I'll let you know when. Like this? Got me in the frame? Mm -hmm. Okay, come in close. Make me look cute. Okay, go wide. close or it'll be out of focus. Travis. Shit. It's, it's not working. Let me see. It doesn't work. Let me see. I can help you with that. Oh. It's okay. I can fix that. Okay. All right? Yeah. You just hang right here. Colleen will take care of everything. Hey, Nay. Camera jammed again and broke my fucking nail. Can I borrow a pack from you? No, Victor will freak. Just let me use his cell phone. <laughs> Come on, babe, I'll pay you back. No, just go talk to Victor. It's not your fault if that ancient camera turns to dust in the middle of a session. <sighs> Shit. Okay. Oh, Travis. Come on, take this. Victor won't give me another pack. So sorry. Come here. Come on. I don't think I can. Yes, you can. See, when Colleen runs out of film, guys like you get real lucky. Let me show you what Colleen can do for you. I don't think I can. That's why I like to take pictures. But you have a lot of pictures of me already. And anyway, you can't touch a picture, and a picture can't touch you. See? Whoa, you are really pretty. Are you a model? It's my job. No, I mean a real model. You tell me. Why don't you take my picture? Well, I didn't come here to take a picture in no shirt, so uh, how's about you dump your tits? Maybe that'll bring out the inner photographer in me. Oh, now we're talking, yeah. All right, now. Put your hands over your head and clasp them together like they're bound. Great. Now, look really scared. So, so this guy outside, he showed me his pictures and you were sucking your thumb. Do that for me. Yeah, suck your thumb like it's a little dick. Yeah, that's it. Take your panties off. So, uh, 
How long have you been modeling here? Just a couple days. Moving out soon. Uh, that's it. You just keep clutching them. Okay, you're out of film now. Session's over. If you want to get more film, go talk to Victor or something. No, I don't think I need any more film. Come on, touch it just a little. What she paid for doesn't include that. Go talk to Victor if you want to schedule something. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know what would happen if I slapped your face right here? It'd hurt, right? I could hit you just one time and it would really hurt you. But the other thing would leave a big bruise. I could walk out of here like nothing happened, go on with the rest of my day. But you, you'd look like a fucking battered housewife. Probably couldn't work for a week. I mean, besides me, who'd want to take a picture of that, right? So do yourself a favor. Give it a little tug. I really like these little hands of yours, so uh, it won't take long. I won't hold back. Come on. There you oh, go. Oh, scumbag keeping pervert. Oh, well, just shut your yap. You're under arrest. What is this? Hey, look, we're just artists here, having a meetup. Like-minded people who like to take pictures of beautiful women. It's a free country, you know. It's just photographs. You can't arrest her. Hey, come on. You know how girls get horny when you take their picture. And you're under arrest. What? Turn around. Listen, Angel, I'm gonna do you a solid. Put your shoes on and head out the back door. You keep your head down, your mouth shut, and I won't bust you, okay? What about Victor? It, you just do what I tell you. Walk out that door and walk to wherever the fuck you came from. No hard feelings. All in the day's play. Uh, but first, wash those hands. Come on, hot. Come on, hot, hot, hot. Oh my god, Nadine, I can't believe it, I was just thinking about you. I think about you every day. Can I come in? Yes, of course. Are you alone? Yeah, Victor got arrested again. Oh. I don't think I'll be seeing him anymore. I got your mail. Oh, okay. Come in, baby.
you in any trouble, dear? Really? Is there anything going on? No, I just need to get out of it all. Come home. I'm real tired. Well, I'm sick. Again. I'm gonna be sick real soon. You gotta leave that stuff alone. I always tell you. Did you forget to pay the phone bill or the electric bill? What's going on with the house? You renovating? It seems empty. I put it on the market. What? I put it on the market. And then I took it off. I had this woman come in. She helped me sell some furniture. But I just couldn't do it. I had this horrible dream. All these people coming into the house. Strangers? I couldn't imagine letting all those strangers in the house. Maybe we could get it ready to sell as is. Maybe we could get some money and get a little apartment or something. I owe on the second mortgage and the house is in disrepair. I'm just gonna wait it out. For what? Oh, Nadine, I've relied on God's will thus far. Why try and stop now? Worst that'll happen is they'll take the house away and I'll just move in with someone from the church. What about me? If you lose the house, where am I going to stay? I didn't know where you were, Nadine. You're a grown woman now. You have to take responsibility. Well, I feel something's got to happen. Something to make things right. Maybe you coming home is just the right thing. Maybe you can get a job. Help me with the mortgage. We could soar through this together. Fix it up. Keep it going. Anna, I'm gonna get real sick soon. I just need to rest. A place to sleep and get well. I just, I can't think about working or anything right now. Something's gotta happen. You gotta make an effort if you wanna stay here. I don't know what the laws are, how long they let you sit in a house that's foreclosed on by the bank, and I've really been just too tired to even go out. I don't even go to church anymore. Helen will stop by and sell some of my paintings at the church. She doesn't take commission. I'm just going to stay here and wait it out. Until they tell me i got to leave. When they tell me, I'll go. I'm just going to wait it out. Mama, didn't you think that I may need to come home? Need a place to go? I mean, you just let it fall apart. You didn't even think about what would happen to me. It's my inheritance, too. It wasn't left to you. It was left to me. I'm your mama, and I love you. But you're at an age that you should be taking care of me. Mama, seriously, I'm going to be sick, and I just need to rest. If you have any medication that could help me get through this part a bit, any meds I could take, like your anxiety medicine, or even some sleeping pills. Oh my god. Devil's got your tongue and he's sneaking it at your mama again. Really, you're here ten minutes and asking me for pills. Next you'll be asking me for money. I ain't got no money. I know you say it's a sickness, girl. But it's the devil. And you've let him into your life. And now he rules the roost. Mom, cut it out with that church chat. I'm just sick. One thing led to another and I got caught up in what Victor was doing and now I'm in a bind. And I just need to rest and get well. Once it's out of my system, I'll be okay. Dope is the same thing as medication. It just gets out of control. It's cheaper than a doctor. When is it going to stop, Nadine? When is it going to stop? It stops now, Mom. Really. It's the last time I'm going to go through this shit. Going to bed.
Nadine. Nadine, what's wrong? I couldn't breathe. And I couldn't swallow. You're just dreaming. Just a bad dream. Now go back to bed. Mom, 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 put the light on, put the light on! What is it, dear? What is it? When the light goes off, there's a man standing in my room. There's no man here. The blood comes down the walls, and the shadows are all bloody. And the shadows? And the man comes only when the light goes off. Nadine, stop it now. You're scaring me. Now go back to bed. Okay, but leave the light on. I don't want him to come in here. across America are playing with a new and frightening game, Satanism. Good is evil and evil is good. The truth is a lie and the lie is a truth. And he laid his hands on my head and he said, at the moment of my death, I pass over all my power and my ability to you. Their school books are marked up with satanic symbols, upside down crosses, pentagrams, the number 666. Would like to classify him as the, the dabbler, then you have your religious Satanist, then you have your non traditional Satanist, and then your generational Satanist. Their fashions glamorize the demonic. They are seduced by heavy metal heroes, many of whom feature satanic imagery in their songs and album covers. There is an infatuation in this, in this music with <coughs> death. Uh, there's another. For some of these young people, the fixation on violence, evil, and death leads them to commit abominable crimes, including some... Hello. God bless you, too. I have a daughter who I think is under the influence of demonic powers. Really? Oh. Oh. I can see to that. Yes. Yes, she is very important to me. I can make the contribution. in this in this music with death uh, there's another for some of these young people the fixation on violence evil and death leads them to commit abominable crimes suicide or drug abuse teen pregnancy what have you because the
I made some tuna fish, it's in the fridge. Just trying to get some exercise, walk around. I'm tired, so I'm gonna go back to bed and rest. Got the mail. Mom, there's a turn off notice for the phone. Mama, what are you painting? The blood of Christ. It's a new series. Weird. No, it's not. Hey, can I borrow a few bucks to go to the store with? I want to get some snacks, like some little cakes and stuff to go with tea later. You gotta work for the perks in life, even cakes. Instead of borrowing money from me, why don't you get out and look for a job? Well, I really need a computer to do that. I can go to the library, maybe tomorrow. I'm tired. I'd really like some cakes for later, though. Come on, I'll be back when I get a job. All you do is rest, Nadine. Well, I was real sick. Still, like, wiped out. You don't know how it feels. No, I don't. Because I never did do those things or get up to no good. Mom, you don't know anything. You're not supposed to treat me like that. I should really be in a treatment program, you know, where it's clean and people know how to speak to you. Know how to speak to you? What are you talking about? It's just like you're my mother and here I am sick and you won't even acknowledge how sick I am. It's like if I was sitting here with a broken leg and you got pissed that I wouldn't get up and walk. Oh, Nadine. Every time I mention getting up, bettering yourself, getting a job, taking responsibility, you dig your heels in and protest. It's always the same thing. Don't blame me, because you don't. Just one step at a time. Just move forward. Pray. Pray to God. He can help you. He can give you guidance, help see you through these things. Mom, I don't need to pray. I need you to be supportive and help me through this. I'm your daughter. I'm right here in front of you. I'm home. Instead of sitting there painting, you should be figuring out how we can keep the house so we'll have a place to stay. You should take it seriously that I'm sick. You should want to look after me instead of being in la-la land all the time. I mean, you barely seem concerned. I've been concerned half your life, baby. You went and run off and got into all that devil stuff. Out running wild like an animal. I prayed you would come home to me. Quit living like you were living. Let Jesus into your heart. Settle down, live like a normal person. I can't believe you'd lie and cheat your mama out of money and then run off again. I never know who you are. If you're my daughter one minute, or the devil the next, just playing games with me. I'm focused on one thing, and that's getting you better, and to bring God to a godless girl. Maybe now that you've hit rock bottom, you'll let me help you for real. Letting you sit around all day and giving you money is not gonna help you, it never did. Maybe I can steer you in the right direction. I've called somebody from the church and they're sending someone over to help me to come talk to you. What? I don't wanna to talk to those people. Please, let them come and talk to you. Please don't embarrass me. Do what I ask. Don't embarrass you? What, like don't act all possessed and crazy? But I am possessed, that's what you told me anyway. That the devil's in me, that the devil's possessed me. That heavy metal music I listened to, that was it, right? Or maybe it was when you caught me smoking pot. Getting high is what done it. But maybe it was because I was sleeping around with all the boys, or that I'm a whore. No, no, baby, no. But that's what you're thinking, that I'm just a whore, and all that fucking has woke the devil up, and I let the devil in me. He snuck in in the middle of the night and fucked me, Mama. Now am I going to embarrass you? No, please stop talking like that, Nadine. 
What, would you rather me speak in my demon voice? Do you want the demon to speak to you? Hello, Delilah. Your bitch of a daughter is hard to handle, but we've got her under control. No need to send any churchy people over to talk to her unless they're willing to stick their cocks in her. One hundred bucks a hump and we'll have the mortgage paid off in no time. Nadine, that's disgusting. Now stop it. I'm not Nadine. I'm the morning star. The truth, the light, crawled up from the crust to save you. We've got a plan. We'll make her work for you. From mother to pimp. And if it doesn't work, we'll burn the whole fucking thing down. Celebrate with me. Dance with me. Waste not. Oh, huh. How was your trip? Where are you coming from? Up from Jacksonville, Florida, where I was visiting a family whose son was a homosexual. He was a very sick boy, but a good boy and a pleasure to work with. Then, then up to Raleigh, North Carolina, to visit an old friend, I'm very sick. I'm afraid that's the last time I'm going to see him. And then up here. They provided a car service? No, a bus. Not much in the line of accommodations in this line of work. Mostly relying on the, on the kindness of others. For the last 10 years, been living out of bus stations pretty much. I'm very busy. You seem nervous. Going into battle with the devil is nerve wracking business, no matter whom you are or how much experience you have. Had a little girl near kill me once, hit a steak knife under the mattress, damn nearly cut me while I was praying with her. Her mother just stood there, and her father was frozen to the floor, didn't lift a finger. 11-year-old girl with the strength of an adult male. So what led you to believe that your daughter's actually possessed? Well, she left home seven years ago. Went off with these movie people. Making movies, getting naked in pictures. Then she got into drugs became an addict. She would only come home to steal or beg money now and then. She looked so sick. She got real mean when things didn't go her way. She never wanted to get a job. Never wanted to get better. Never had a job, really. It's a, it's a long time to be carrying on that way. She's been arrested for prostitution and drugs before, too. That's when things got really bad. Still, she wouldn't come home or get clean. Um, what other signs? Any, anything demonic? She sees things. Sees things? Yeah. She sees a man in her room when the lights go off. She told me the walls were bleeding. Come on. 
She told me she's in league with the devil. She spoke in this raspy, strained voice and attacked me the other night. I had to hit my own daughter to get her off me. That's it. That's it. That's the demon, Delilah. It's okay. It's okay. You did the right thing. You didn't hurt your daughter. No, sir. She didn't feel a thing. You struck the devil down. See, a bruise will heal. But if you let the devil rest, he'll build up his strength and strike again. You did the right thing. Don't you worry about that. Now, when we start this thing, I need to know that you absolutely trust in the power of God. And trust me to be the conductor of white light that will blast those demons back to hell. It is not going to be an easy thing to watch, to know what's going on. But I promise you, you'll have your daughter back in a day or two. Is that the contribution? Yes. God bless this room and bless this woman. Please hear our prayers and protect your humble servants. All unclean spirits, leave the premises immediately or you will be cast into the fire pits of hell from whence you came. Good morning, Nadine. We're going to be working together today. Okay? Okay. Oh my God, Mom. Oh my God is right. These seemingly innocuous posters and the music, the TV, all of it, the dope, what have you, they're all gateways to Satan. I know you've heard it all before, but they're like a, they're like a, a poison, a cancer. And when you're exposed to one, it's not so bad. But bombarded by all of them at the same time, they can make you very sick. They weaken your mind your soul, until eventually they weaken your body, and then they take you and they kill you. It'd be the ruin of you. It destroys your pretty skin, destroys your sweet mouth, and pulls out all your teeth until you look like an old hag, and you're looking in the mirror, and there's Satan staring back at you, mocking you. We're going to put these up. surround you with the symbols of goodness. The sign of the cross. Keep those, those evil creepers out of your room. The ones your mama said were bothering you. That was just a dream. I was sick. Yeah, it seems like a dream. They come in dreams. But then before you know it, this nightmare is real. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Do you love Jesus? Hmm? Do you love him? Yes. He feels sorry for us. Yes, he does. He sure does love you, child. He does love you. Well, that's good. That's good that you love Jesus. Back at you. <laughs> Back at you. 
at you. Mm. <laughs> well, isn't that beautiful? Amazing. Okay, Ma. Sit up, child. Look at me. Look me in the eye. We're going to be working together. Your mama brought me in to help you. She says you've really been struggling. And I know you probably want to bolt out the door and not hear any of this mumbo jumbo. But your mama really loves you. And the church really loves you. And whether you understand it or believe it, Jesus really loves you. And I want to make sure that when I leave here, things are a little bit better than they were when I arrived. So I'm going to be working with you. And I want to be with you, with your cooperation. So are you going to give me a chance to bring Jesus into your life and set you on the right path? Give me a chance to really help you out and make you well. Yeah, okay. I do want that. I want to be well. Can I have some coffee first? <laughs> Bless you, child. Delilah, can you get the girl some coffee? Splendid. Of course. I need to know exactly what you were into before you got home. I was doing photo shoots for money. The police busted my boyfriend, so I had to come home. Nudes? What? Were you doing nude photography? Pornography? Yes. Were you a prostitute? Sometimes. Why does that matter? It matters. It matters what kind of demon has a hold of you how strong it is, what I need to do to set it right. The devil is really attracted to prostitutes. Didn't Jesus used to hang around with prostitutes? Yeah, lepers too. Did they ever make you come? What? When you were with a John, did it ever give you pleasure? Voluntarily? Did you ever start to enjoy that kind of work? Oh. <clears throat> Man puts himself on a level with the beast when he seeks to gratify lust alone. He elevates his superior position when, by curbing the animal desire, he combines the sexual functions with ideas of morality, the sublime, and beautiful. I just needed to know how far along you are. It's going to be a quick trip back. Drink your coffee. Child, aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of all the lies you have to tell just to get by? All the places you have to go, the horrible vermin you have to be with just to keep up? Aren't you tired of chasing that fix or that next head? And then little by little, losing every inch of ground that you walk upon until you find yourself standing at the edge of that big black hole looking into the abyss and you hear that crying and screaming and moaning and the wailing 
Well, that's you now there, isn't it? Leaning over the edge and losing your balance. Don't you want to leave this slimy mud ball called Earth? Soar high in the heavens? When you die, don't you want to go back up with God? And your beautiful mother and your whole family? Be with the angels? Imagine being with the angels for real, basking in the light of God's glory. And leave behind the pain and the suffering, all the agony and the exhaustion. Leave the cravings and the wanting. I know about these things, Nadine. I wasn't born a saint. I had to learn the hard way, just like you did. I had to hang from my... I had to, I had to hang from my splintering fingernails from the edge of the precipice with, with the flames of hell licking my heels. licking through the holes in the soles of my boots. I could not run no more. I was licking through the holes in my soul. You know you can blow holes in your soul, don't you? Yeah, well, you can. And I think you have. You watch TV, right? Listen to that heavy metal music. I do too. And you see them stars on TV with their multi-million dollar homes and their cars and their boats and their planes. But they ignore the starving. They visit exotic lands and they buy jewels and they lust after their rocks and their precious metals. Meanwhile, they ignore the cries of the impoverished. And they build their multi-million dollar homes as shrines to the living devil. They fashion and shape their furniture in the shapes of pentagrams and upside down crosses. And you see it with your eyes, those programs about the rich and famous, and you see inside their homes those subliminal signs of the devil. And they go right through that doorway and burn an imprint on your soul your heart, in your mind. And then you secretly start to desire and envy these creatures, these modern day demons. And you want to be like them. You start to hoard money, covet possessions. And you want to party all the time and drink and take drugs. And yeah, yeah, woo, hey. Meanwhile, the devils run rampant and run wild. You take drugs, don't you? Not anymore. Yeah, what well, you were hooked. What'd you start on, marijuana? Yes. What else you do? Uh, Acid? Yes. You poor girl. That's powerful stuff. It opens you up leaves you susceptible to being penetrated by those who no longer have bodies. What else do you do? PCP, heroin, cocaine? Yes. Ah, oh, see, you're just blowing holes in your soul. You're making it easy. You're cutting a new doorway every day for some odd, demented, mutant byproduct of paradise to just slither into you. Some outcast degenerate, damned to float in the ether, looking for light, some sort of excitement to latch onto. Do you have sex for money? Yes. <laughs> yeah, see, they love that. That really brings them on to you. When they see a woman, a vulnerable woman, having pleasure, giving pleasure, getting high, taking drugs, you see, they want that. But they haven't got bodies to do it. So they slither on up into you. And they thrive on it. 
and they habituate you to it. And then from the inside, they say, pop that pill, take another bump, have another drink. And all the while, fornicate all you can, as much as you can, until you're exhausted and raw. They want to feel that again. They can't go to heaven, so they got to hold out here in limbo. They got to crawl out of the cracks in the earth and escape hell so they can come back to earth and relive the things that bind them here. What that won't let them pass? Their addictions, these chains that hold them to earth, lust, greed, pain, masochism, sadism, Nadine, you want to escape all that before one of them drives you to an early grave, before you're one of them things, hurting pretty lost girls. You want to wash away all that humiliation and hurt, be fresh and new and clean again, be free of the addictions that have degraded your heart and your mind and your soul. Yes, I do want that. I want to be free. I want it to go away. I want to start over. Clean slate and never talk about it again. Will you allow me to bring the Lord into your heart so there ain't no room for the demons anymore? And will you trust me unquestionably to push the demons from your soul? Yes. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> A lesson from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Luke 10, 17, 20. At that time, the 72 returned in high spirits. Master, they said, even the demons are subject to us because we use your name. Yes, he said to them, I was watching Satan fall like lightning that flashes from the heaven. A lesson from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Luke 11, 14, 22. Almighty Lord, word of God the Father, Jesus Christ, God and Lord of all creation, who gave to your holy apostle the power to tramp underfoot serpents and scorpions, who along with the other mandates to work miracles was pleased to grant them the authority to say, depart you devils, I cast you out unclean spirit, along with every satanic power of the enemy, every specter from hell, and all your fellow companions in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be gone and stay far from the land of the creature of the God, for it is he who commands you, he who flung you headlong from the heights of the heaven into the depths of hell. It is he who commands you. He who once stilled the sea and wind and storm. Hearken therefore and remember and hearken therefore and tremble and fear, Satan, you enemy of the faith, you foe of the human race, you begetter of death, you robber of life. By him who has power to consign you to hell, to depart forthwith in fear, along with your savage minions from this servant of God who seeks to refuge in the fold of the church. I adjure you again, not by my weakness, but by the mighty might of the Holy Spirit, to depart from this servant of God, who Almighty God has made in his image. Yield, therefore, yield, not to my own person, but to the minister of Christ, for it is the power of Christ that compels you, who brought you low by his cross. Lesson from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Luke 10, 17, 20. At that time the 72 returned in high spirits. Master, they said, even the demons are subject to us because we use your name. Yes, he said to them, I was watching Satan fall like lightning that flashes from the heaven. A lesson from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke 11, 14, 22. Almighty Lord, Word of God the Father, Jesus Christ, 
Lord and God of all creation, who gave to your holy apostles the power to tramp underfoot serpents and scorpions, who along with other mandates to work miracles was pleased to grant them the authority to say, depart you devils, I cast you out unclean spirit, along with every satanic power of the enemy. This is it, we brought him to the surface. This is the demon, hold your daughter, hold her tight. All right, I need to get more, more holy water. You bitch, you can't hold me. I am and always will be. That tap water can't hurt me. You're just jealous of me because I'm young and you're old because I get fucked in your dry as a bone. Delilah, it's not your daughter. It's the demon. Don't talk to it, just pray. Tremble before the mighty arm that broke asunder the dark prison walls and led forth to light. May the trembling that afflicts this human frame. You like making me all wet, don't you? Trying to get my shirt white so you can see my tits. You ask me about who I fuck so you want to imagine it. You pig. You're no man of God. You're slime, just like me. Why don't you take me in the back room and we'll be done with this farce? Let's make a deal. Nadine, you stop that talk now. I will cast you into a pit of darkness if you touch me again. The fear to afflicts this image of the God to sin on you. Make no resistance nor delay in departing from this world. For it has pleased Christ to dwell in man. Do not think of despising my command, because you know me to be a great sinner. And it is God himself who commands you, and the majestic Christ who commands you. The God the Father commands you. God the Son commands you. God the Holy Spirit commands you. The mystery of the cross commands you. No, stop it! Why are you hurting me? Hurt me! Depart, depart then, transgressor. Depart, seducer of lies and cunning, foe of virtue, persecutor of the innocent. Give place, abominable creature. Give way, you monster. Give way to Christ. Therefore I adjure you, you profligate dragon, in the name of the spotless lamb, who has trodden down the asp and the basilisk, and overcome the lion and the dragon, to depart from this man, woman, on. it over now? Do you feel anger? No, I feel real calm. Just out of breath. It can take a, a lot out of you. But uh, she's okay. She's fine. You're fine. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Lord God. Can I go to bed now? Yeah. How about some tea? For your throat. You're screaming. Okay. Tea, then I'll go to bed. Tape all your sessions. For my notes, for my records, I, I listen back when I need to remember old bits. I've learned a lot from those tapes. I'm so glad she's back. Really, worth every penny. Not only do I get my daughter back, I made a contribution to the church. And for a great cause. Lovely. What kind of a contribution? For the preacher in the service, I made a contribution. If I knew it was going to be this easy, and that it was even possible, I would have done it years ago. What's a few thousand dollars when you can save your daughter's life? A few thousand dollars? Mama, that's probably all you have, all we have to live on. It's nothing. Having you well is all I look forward to. And now you can work. Things will fall into place. A few thousand dollars. Mom, I was making it up. The demon voices, the screaming. I did on purpose. I just wanted things to end. I thought the preacher was nice. And you were so hopeful. 
I just wanted to end, to be over with. This spook talk is ridiculous. I made up the voices. He's robbing you, Mama. He's just trying to rip you off. The church didn't send him. Where did he come from? Listen, mister. My mama may be gullible, but I'm not. You better turn everything you're taking from her. Delilah, hold her daughter. That's the demon speaking. It's gonna get real now. This is what I was talking about. Nadine, you are a liar. You felt the holy water burning your skin, and you know you wanted me to stop. You tried to trick me into letting you go in the middle of the exorcism, and now your demons are coming out one by one. It's all a bullshit lie. I never believed in demons. I made it up just to trick you, and you're both stupid, and it worked. Now you're embarrassed because I caught you trying to steal from my mother. Hold your daughter. Let go of me. He's robbing you. Okay, you better give all the money back, or I will call the police. I'm only here to help. You have to believe me, Nadine. I will help you, Nadine, but you've got to trust me. Fuck you. I thought you were a nice guy. Maybe a little crazy, but nice. But you're just a fucking manipulative creep. Get away from me. You fucking thief. Is that what you want your life to be? Because you wouldn't really do it if that's not what you wanted your life to be. You want to be a performer? That's the same as being a liar. You want to be a whore all your life? You want to spill the feed and take the cash and get that spike and fill your head with dope and float around and come crashing down? Hide yourself behind every vice imaginable. You want to be a star. You want to have men spill their seed to your picture and they lick their lips and they jerk their cocks. Or you want to fuck every man who comes to the door? You like the smell. You like the feel. end of your life, you want to sit with God and review and watch every scene of you grinding all over these men like an animal, bucking and writhing. Are you a star now? Are you the star of the show? You got a decision to make, huh? You need time to think? I know this is hard for you to watch, but remember I asked if I have your complete trust and cooperation. There's more than one demon, and they have sharp, witty tongues, and it can bring out the worst of a man, and sometimes you have to fight fire with fire. She is secured, and so she won't be coming at us or, or fleeing the house. She told me the other night she crawled up from the crust. She said that. That's right. That's right. But I promise you, I will get the demon's name and cast them out. She'll be fine the way she is, and you should just say goodnight and get some sleep. I don't think you really understand, child. I don't think you ever did. Science, all these newfangled explanations, protons, particles, it's all new, dear. That's what modern man created, to give him something to believe in, so he could sit around and soak in his sins all the day. But the spirits, the spirits, child, good and evil. 
They're as old as time. No time of man on this earth has ever been without attenuation to the spirits. And sometimes, sometimes, baby, they get in your head. And that's what's wrong with you now. You're my good girl, baby. My best girl. My only girl. If we get that black as night demon out of your mind, you'll be my special girl again, won't you? I just know it. You know, dear, not one night goes by that I don't see you in my dreams. Dressed all in that Sunday best, like back when you were a little girl. We're going to get that girl back, won't we? We're going to erase all the wrong that's been done to this case that's wrapped around your bright white soul. That's what me and the preacher talked about. See, baby? This is just a shell, a shell for the part of you that really matters. We can bend the shell, baby. We can clean the dirt right off of it. Make it shine, shine just like it's supposed to. Undress. You're going in the tub. A practice used in the Inquisition days when women ran wild in the woods. Much like they do today. Teasing and dancing in that devil's playground. Living as animals. The inquisitors would use ice baths to evoke confessions. In this case, to evoke the name of the demon. With the name of he who dwells within, I can cast him out. <laughs>
that's a good girl now. You're so cold. Biology and nature. The devil's playground. But it doesn't change a thing. I'm a sinner. Now and again. I get blown over by by earthly temptations. The devil is strong when he's wearing your flesh. The devil is strong when he's dressed in beautiful skin. But it doesn't change a thing. I know. I just want you to tell me that you won't hurt me anymore. I would never hurt. Nothing I've done is to hurt you. When your devils boil over with sex, I can, I can satiate that heat. Give us enough time to get back on track and extract the devil's name. If I have to spill a little seed to save your soul, and damn myself in the process, Demons. Just you and I here. I don't believe in demons. We don't have to play along with this. One way or another, I'm going to show you that the path you're on is wrong and that you've got to make a change. I'm not going to let this little detour into that grave that you dug between your legs make any difference. Tell me the name of all the demons inside of you, every last one. And by doing so, you will acknowledge the devil's power over you, and you will acknowledge your mother's help, and you will acknowledge my help. And then everything that we will have done will have had its place. And then they will leave your body. And then I will leave your body. It's inevitable what's going to happen, and, and, I, and I feel very strongly about that, that we are in the last days. The witch finders used to use a hat pin to pierce the skin. And if it bled, it was human. If it didn't bleed, someone was wearing that skin. Tell me your name. Any name, just mouth the words. Even if it doesn't make a lick of sense to you, just do it and I'll be gone. really the kind of attention you seek? Don't you want to be done with all this? If 
you would choose the right path, you could be making a real life for yourself right now instead of hanging out with people you don't want to be around. Like some stinky John or being stuck in some stinky ass jail. Depending on a little old lady being here with me. Nadine, I've given you a clear path to end all this madness. And you keep pulling in the wrong direction. There's so much talk of Christ, Nadine. So much talk. And most of it amounts to exactly that, just talk. You see, there's a little something that seems to have been forgotten about the Lord over the years. It gets all mucked up with talk of being humble and selfless. <laughs> Which, of course, he was, he was. But what gets skimmed over the thing that I like to remind people in your situation of. So Christ was strong, Nadine. Christ had power. <laughs> Christ near had power. He was not as poor as the power of the Lord was just, it was just spilling out of him. And then at some point over the years, when man became more frail in matters of the soul, he found it easy to forget that the power of God, easy to forget the, the vigor that allowed God to take hold of the hearts and minds of man in the first place. So for a person like you, I think I could best explain it by saying they started to cut the word of God with weaker stuff. <laughs> And now, now, now we got a real mess in our hands all over this whole planet. To me, for my eye nading, the way I see it, we're basically at end times. We're not exactly there, but we're damn close. People are cutting each other up out there, Nadine. They're eating each other. And look at you and I. You're barely hanging on. And I, an honest preacher, I can hardly eke out a living. But we still got, we still got a shot, needing. The Lord ain't given. The Lord ain't laying down the gauntlet for man just yet. He's given us a chance. He's giving us a chance to find the strength, the power that Christ had. That power. We gotta fight, Nadine. That's it's the only way. Maybe all you gotta do is break that little promise you made to yourself. That bargain you made with the devil to keep your secret. If that's all I need from you, why won't you give it? Now you're gonna dig deep. Dig deep. In this clean slate. Tell me your name, demon. Tell me.
me your name or I'll beat it out of you! Has the demon left you? Que 
So 